hello all myself dr amit jain <coughs> and uh, we'll be discussing the questions from the inict may 2022 the biochemistry section right so guys the biochem section was this time little uh, different right or unbalanced we can say fine because there were very less questions from the sections like metabolism and all but uh, the questions whatever they have been asked right they were easy except the new terms that you have seen you know? so you so you saw some new terms uh, terms right and then people panicked like you know you saw something like let's say digital droplet pcr uh, like that and you saw sanger's technique in uh, multiple options so that was not the questions on sanger's technique actually right the questions were different questions were not difficult fine so the questions were straight forward and uh, except one or two points which are you know something that cannot be uh, answered easily we'll see right as per the recall right from the students from all of you we'll see that what are the questions and what are the options right and we'll try to cover uh, new terms and new points also okay so is the first question <coughs> was uh, very simple so amino acid not restricted in the management of maple syrup urine disease okay so what is the name of the amino acid which is not restricted so guys as we all know the maple syrup urine disease okay so maple syrup urine disease is a disease which is due to the deficient uh, metabolism or catabolism of branch chain amino acids right so we have the three branch chain amino acids valine isoleucine and leucine or we can remember them as liv right because they are very important for the life for the growth especially right for the growth okay because these are the three amino acids which can be utilized by the muscles for and skeleton for the growth plus energy production both and then with the, there is a very uh, low hepatic uh, first pass metabolism for them okay so uh, as you can see this question is very easy because these three we have to restrict in the disease but methionine can be supplemented or any other amino acid apart from these three can be given and has to be given right you know out of the let's say 20 amino acids you have to give the other 17 right okay amino acids to the patient so some more points on uh, uh, this topic right so that is maple syrup urine disease guys the most important points that i'm summarizing here that you must know so there is a deficiency of the enzyme that is called as branch chain amino acid alpha keto dehydrogenase complex okay alpha keto dehydrogenase complex so guys this is a complex which is same as the pdh complex right so it resembles with the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex you know with the three enzymes which are known as e1 e2 and e3 e3 of the pdh right and the e3 of this complex are same right they are same so first thing to remember that e3 the e3 name is called as dihydrolipoyl okay dihydrolipoyl d hydro genase right so this is the name of e3 which is same in the pdh which is same in branch chain amino acid alpha keto dehydrogenase and it is also same in alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase complex of the krab cycle right okay one second thing that we must uh, we we should know is that there are five coenzymes right five coenzymes are needed so what are the five coenzymes thiamine riboflavin or fad then we need nad right so we can say fad nad then we need coenzyme a or vitamin b5 and then we also need the lipoic acid okay so guys we have the variants which are thiamine responsive maple syrup urine disease right because thiamine is the <clears throat> most important right vitamin for the reaction that is called as oxidative decarboxylation uh, in this case it is oxidative decarboxylation and thiamine is the most important so we have the cases which are known as thiamine responsive maple syrup urine disease 
okay <clears throat> so in this case what happens uh, you know what will happen in the investigation part right in the investigation part you will find uh, a large quantities of uh, you know increased quantities of the alpha keto acids okay alpha keto acids of the bcaa's right but especially the leucine right okay and this is neurotoxic and that's why the patient presents with most of the neurological clinical features like office the toners rigidity right and some uh, unusual movements like bicycling movements okay and uh, so these are like uh, you know various uh, neurological complication will be seen and the patient dies because of acidosis right okay <clears throat> and uh, you know even the because of these alpha keto acid acids the, they will be also positive rothera's test right rothera test will also be positive so these are neurotoxic and this will lead to death guys we can do mass spectrometry you know the uh, the technique of choice for the investigation and screening of any inborn error of metabolism is mass spectrometry and on the mass spectrometry you will find a special isomer i lo iso leucine guys this is the marker okay this is the marker of the uh, this particular disease lo iso leucine right and guys there is increased in the formation of a compound that's called as stolone right stolone is a uh, is a compound which is made from these alpha keto acids by some uh, reactions right and this is the cause of the burning uh, what we can say the maple syrup urine order or the burnt sugar order right so this is the cause of burnt sugar order or you can say intensely sweet order from the urine right from the diaper of the child right so that is a investigation part and guys the management question that we have already seen especially leucine is most neurotoxic right but we have to initially take all the three amino acid down in the diet right okay but uh, you know the other two amino acids uh, levels are uh, can easily be managed but leucine is the most uh, challenging one so leucine restriction is the most important so guys we are doing restriction and uh, not the zero one because three are essential amino acids so you cannot make them zero so that's why we are doing what restriction okay so restriction is important here okay so restrictions of branch chain amino acids okay branch chain amino acids right so that's all about uh, maple syrup urine disease so this was our mcq now uh, just a second so uh, now uh, question number 2 so identify the type of enzyme inhibition which is shown below right so this was a image based uh, question was asked right so as you can see the y axis shows 1 by v and the x axis shows the 1 by s or the minus 1 by km right okay so you know guys this is a line weaver berg plot right what we call this line weaver berg plot so these two question that we are discussing one we have discussed this so they have been already discussed very commonly in our classes in our notes right so line weaver berg plot okay we also called this as a double reciprocal right double reciprocal plot because we are taking 1 by v reciprocal na 1 by s reciprocal so why we are taking this because you know this is kind of a log curve and you know uh, in a normal michaelis menten curve right normal michaelis menten curve it was uh, very difficult to analyze the uh, you know the point where the vmax is reached you know it needs a very high concentration of the substrate right so to calculate the km value it was also very difficult but this if you draw this curve you know we can uh, use just the a uh, limited concentration of the substrate and know the values of km so the, these are easier to draw and these are more commonly used nowadays instead of michaelis menten curves okay i mean to say to study any new enzyme or any enzyme in the research okay so guys simple it is very simple it is a, a, a what kind of uh, enzyme inhibition is shown here so the answer for this question is definitely competitive <clears throat> 
okay guys because you can see here you can see here that the vmax values are unchanged you know but the km values are increased you know moving towards the zero so the km value in the presence of inhibitor the km value is increased so there is increased in km and vmax is same right vmax is same so guys competitive inhibition is reversible right competitive inhibition as you all know is reversible right because the substrate binds at the active site so this is an enzyme and substrate binds at uh, the active site and also the inhibitor which is competing is also bind at the active site right so both are binding at the active site so you know if you increase the substrate concentration that is km value what is km substrate concentration at which the vmax by 2 is achieved that is called as a km so km is substrate so increase substrate concentration and this i will be inhibitor will be displaced from here so that's the point guys the km value will increase so the substrate has to be increased to reach same vmax are you getting the point this is reversible if you increase substrate you can achieve the vmax the same vmax without inhibitor okay so that is a point that's why we say km is increased vmax is same right okay so you know just to remember to achieve the success in competition we have to travel more kilometers with the same highest speed right so this is the motivation in the mcq okay we have to travel more kilometers in the same high speed highest speed okay guys that's easy so this is your competitive inhibition the non competitive and others uh, have the different curves right okay right so first uh, you remember this as per the mcq so revise your notes right especially for this point that is inhibitions right okay <clears throat> now is coming to the question which student were thinking that what they have asked we have never heard about it like what is this okay so guys human genome project so what we study in our notes what everything about the genes that we are talking about is what is the findings of human genome project right okay so human genome project it was started in 1990 okay it was uh, started in 1990 and it was completed in 2013 so total number of 13 years it took to study the human genes right so to study the human genes we took almost 13 years right so the question was false regarding human genome project okay so see first let's see the option then we'll take some more points it was an effort of international collaboration yes right so there were uh, six countries which participated in this okay the six countries were like us then uk then uh, germany and the france and uh, japan and china right so total six countries uh, they participated in this okay and they analyzed the human dna okay human dna right now looking at the option right before looking at the option right so suppose this is like international collaboration yes they identified 20000 genes guys as per the you know the publication in 2003 you know they have identified 31000 genes right in the humans okay how much 31000 you know in the beginning they expected that the number of genes they will be able to identify will be around 80000 you know why because already we have known proteins which are around 80000 let's say huh? so they thought that 80000 proteins are made so obviously they are from which process they are from the genes 80000 genes but as you know we have seen a process already that is called as alternative splicing okay rna editing etc so alternative splicing or rna editing you know because of them when ultimately they found out the genes they were less because because of these two process known as alternative splicing and rna editing right because of these two process we have the less number of genes but more number of proteins you know we can use one gene to make multiple proteins like you know by rna editing we made b48 right from the b100 mrna so that is used in chylomicron synthesis so b100 and b48 are counted as two proteins so that's why like we can say one gene two proteins we have so 
so there were around 31000 genes they identified right the actual human genome project actually the human genome project uh, was uh, simul you know there were two projects going on simultaneously right by the two different group of scientists so the other sign other group also find the number of genes not uh, the 20000 but you know more than that around 26000 right okay so guys that is definitely not 20000 genes that is more than that fine it is completed in two decades no i told you it is like not exactly two decades but 13 years fine so we can say at least this is false this is definitely false right this is more than this two decades less than that this is also almost false and then what was the fourth option i'm not sure but uh, the students most of the students said the fourth option was sanger sequencing and so they used use the sanger's sequencing okay so guys yes that's correct huh? that's correct to sequence the dna right see guys what is sequencing we'll talk more about this in the uh, in, in just a few minutes right so sequencing right what is the sequencing means what is the sequence of the gene right what is the sequence of the gene right whatever it is like c a t g c a a a c c g c a t like whatever it is okay so what is the sequence and how it is analyzed right now we know that we have a gene for insulin suppose so how the gene was sequenced where it was mapped so that was a human genome project so where is the insulin gene present on which chromosome right which part of the chromosome number let's say 1 okay so that is a mapping of the genes to the chromosome okay so that was part of the human genome project right we have to identify the genes okay we have to then identify uh, where they are mapped okay where they are placed okay so that is called as a human genome project <clears throat> okay so guys see first of all before proceeding further they use sanger sequencing if this was the option yes that's the correct option right we'll take it international collaboration yes that's the correct option i don't know about these two option what they said but yes definitely if these two are the option both are incorrect right okay so if i have to go with the one okay i would go with that they identify 2000 20000 i don't know what was the option exactly but yes if it is 20000 we will say no it was 31000 was the correct answer so i will go with identified 20000 genes okay now again if sanger sequencing was mentioned that is correct shotgun sequencing i'll tell you that what is that shotgun sequencing that is also correct but if they mentioned the next generation sequencing that is incorrect because that time this ngs or the next generation sequencing was actually not Uh, available okay when we started this project right so that was not uh, <coughs> available that time so it was a very laborious process because you know ngs if it was available next generation sequencing can give you the results of your genes in just a week just a just a few days okay but these takes a very long time you know i'll tell you okay right okay guys so what is human genome project so let's talk about this human genome project okay just so uh <clears throat> human uh genome project okay so guys i told you it started in uh, 1990 and it was completed in 2003 so it took total number of 13 years right okay it was an international collaboration i told you already right so guys what are the findings what, what was the purpose purpose was right what was the purpose of the human genome project the purpose was to map right so map the genes on chromosomes okay to map the genes on the chromosomes fine so this was a major purpose and also to identify identify the disease causing genes right identify the disease causing genes and to identify the new genes or whatever it is right we are still identifying new genes it is uh, we can say like it is still not complete the human genome project we can say is always ongoing because we are always finding new genes we can say like that huh? but it was completed officially in 2003 okay so this was a purpose what are the facts right or the findings you can say so the findings was that human dna 
fine the human dna that is around 3.2 billion so this is like you know we always have this point we always know this point 3.2 or around 3 billion we always say 3 billion base pairs right 3 billion base pairs there is out of this only 1 to 1.5 percent okay of the dna is coding right coding or that contains the genes right so only 1.5 percent that is already a separate mcq that how much of the human dna is coding so that is again a finding of human genome project right which is already question this is already a part of question right so 1.5 percent is coding dna so rest of the dna rest of the dna is called as the junk dna so they called it junk dna right so we now know them uh, as introns right plus the repetitive sequences okay repetitive sequences which are known as vntrs for example variable number of tandem repeats so they are not just junk <clears throat> okay they are not uh, the junk okay junk dna fine so basically uh, you know this is the dna which is uh, what we can say is uh, having some sequences which can be utilized in some other techniques right which can be utilized in some techniques okay so that is your variable number of tandem repeats right like you know dna fingerprinting we can do with the help of entrs okay so that is the other finding then there are a lot of uh, you know other findings says uh, that you know uh, the size of the gene is around right around 3000 base pairs okay but the biggest gene was they they said the biggest gene was dystrophin right dystrophin has 2.4 million base pair so that was the one which is the biggest uh, gene then it was found that the dna uh, the chromosomes you know so we had 23 pairs of chromosomes and out of the 23 pairs of chromosome like you know there are uh, the chromosome number one right it has the maximum number of genes right around 2968 okay so chromosome number one has maximum number of genes and the y chromosome has the minimum number of genes right okay so <clears throat> guys these were the uh, you know findings right one of the findings says that that the humans differ in their dna just by 0.2 percent right okay humans like you know two humans if you take they have very much similarity in dna but they differ they always differ and that is the basis of dna fingerprinting so as per this report humans differ in 0.2 percent of the dna only and that much is sufficient right to make us unique and that gave us a unique identity okay so and guys uh, as per this human genome project also we have acquired certain genes lot of genes you know as per their report 200 or more than that so we have acquired certain genes from the bacteria by the lateral or the horizontal genome transfer right so you know humans you know they have acquired okay genes from the bacterial bacteria right so any bacteria which invades us like for example prokaryote which invades us okay we can acquire certain genes like genes of uh, let's say the ampicillin resistance or, or antibiotic resistance right so humans acquire the genes from the bacteria via lateral or horizontal transfer guys what is the horizontal transfer means you know like for example we have received genes from from our mother and father so that is like they are our ancestors they are uh, we are the direct progeny so we that is called as a vertical transfer uh, we have received uh, genes from our parents by vertical transfer this is like without you know having uh, any relation without being the child of anyone you have received some gene that is horizontal transfer so like from bacteria uh, we have received that right <clears throat> so they can be dangerous right because they can induce certain genomic changes okay <clears throat> so guys these are the uh, some of the important 
findings the most important findings i have already summarized here okay i have told you everything the basic things that you should know about the human genome project okay out of them few we already knew right okay so guys that's your question number so human genome project acha see the point is they used sanger's technique shotgun sequencing so guys if the best answer i have to write it will be shotgun sequencing which is part of the sangers only right so shotgun imagine a gun right imagine a gun which is you know bombarding the bullets on the dna i mean to say what we did in human genome project was right we cut we have cut the dna into the small small pieces right so that is shotgun and then we sequenced it okay so you know when we take a dna using some enzymes like restriction endonuclease okay so cut into small pieces right small you all know what is restriction endonuclease right so we can cut them into small pieces for example and these small pieces of the dna or the gene they will be then you know sequenced using the technique known as the sangers sequencing okay sanger sequencing was done so guys both can be correct answer shotgun sequencing student said it is not uh, was not in the option it's fine if it is there next time it is the best answer and that is because uh, it was a name given to that otherwise the sanger sequencing is also the correct answer but not the next generation right that will be uh, that was not available that time that that's why it was a laborious process suppose if we had the next generation sequencing already available it would have taken just few months right okay to analyze the sequence of genes so sequence of genes means the whole sequence of the dna which was cut into small small fragments was you know these fragments were then isolated you know these fragments were isolated isolated and then they were you know they were actually uh, analyzed sequenced in different different part of the world i told you like germany japan okay so that's why it took a long time because after getting all the information these uh, sequences were again so called stitched back we can say you know to know the actual sequence from 1.1 to 0.100 hope you understood the basics of human genome uh, project <clears throat> okay human genome project okay guys so question number 3 right i would go with the answer that identify 20000 genes is a false statement huh? right deamination of methyl cytosine so guys nothing uh, difficult again simple question from your notes right that you all know that i always talk about deamination of methyl cytosine generates what so answer is uracil so guys i always tell you the structure of uh, you know the uh, pyrimidine nucleotides which is having a single ring right so having uh, let's say the two nitrogens which are present like this okay then if there is a nh2 that is a amino group present here this is called as cytosine now when you deaminate cytosine right normally so if you deaminate cytosine what you get is called as uracil right so that is uracil oxidized okay nitrogen nitrogen and then ultimately we get thymidine okay so from this point but just by methylation of uracil see same structure of uracil but it is methylated so that is called as thymidine now they are asking us the question right if methyl cytosine i'm sorry not the answer uracil is not the answer if methyl cytosine is uh, uh, deaminated so suppose now right if i say if i say this okay methyl cytosine so this is nh2 that is cytosine and it has a methyl group already present right guys methyl group already present so if you deaminate it so that will be oxidation and guys this is called as now the t so our answer will be thymine okay our answer will be thymine sorry in this option i have not mentioned that okay so please will change one option to let's say 
uh, any 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 option we can take suppose this and the answer will be time okay nothing else can be answer right nothing else can be answer so answer will be time okay <clears throat> so hope you understood this simple process right and there was one more question we had that uh, what is the vitamin required for conversion of uracil to thymine so hope this question is clear nothing difficult easy one so answer will be t here okay. right just methylate this and remove the nh2 so it looks like t so these are now looking like t like this okay question number 5 which of the following vitamin deficiency will prevent the thymine insertion in the dna okay which of the following vitamin deficiency will prevent thymine insertion in dna so guys answer to this question will be folate okay folate because to convert u to the t right i told you here we have to add the methyl group now to convert u to the t so to convert u to the t we need a enzyme that is called as thymidylate synthase right what do you call this thymidylate okay thymidylate synthase so you have to just add a methyl group here right methyl group so this methylation reaction needs what you need is methylene tetrahydrofolate so which is then converted into dihydrofolate so guys this enzyme thymidylate synthase is inhibited by 5 fluorouracil the anti cancer drug this is called suicidal inhibition because you know it is binding to u right that is 5 fluoro u uracil so that is also uracil but having fluorine atom at fifth position now guys if the fifth position is not free so this is one uh, not like this one two three four and five and six so fifth position should have methyl group now to make the t but here the fifth position is already having fluorine atom so this will be inhibition of this enzyme cannot work further so guys this dhf this dhf is converted back to the methylene dhf by dihydrofolate reductase okay dihydro folate reductase okay guys and this is inhibited by methotrexate okay inhibited by the methotrexate <clears throat> so that's the point question number 5 we are done with that okay so now sequencing of the dna so this was a question di deoxy nucleotides are used in sanger's technique as so guys at least uh, you know we all know what is a di deoxy nucleotide right okay we have discussed about sanger's also right okay in our classes so but we have discussed always about the di deoxy nucleotides right because see normally a nucleotide okay this is a sugar so nucleotide has two oh groups right this is first second third fourth and five primes actually uh, in the primes so we have the 1 2 3 4 5 primes so we have uh, oh groups present on the both but to make the dna we remove the oh from the second prime position right we remove the o from the second prime position right okay but oh is still there on the three prime position so this is a normal uh, case of a nucleotide during dna synthesis right so during dna synthesis you know there is a polymerization of nucleotides okay so the incoming nucleotide with the phosphate right will bind to this oh group we all know this already this is by the phosphodiester bond by the dna polymerase or the dna ligase but polymerase here so guys this is uh, this is what you can say the phosphate is bound to the oh group so suppose if there is no oh group on this three prime position also so this is called as a di deoxy nucleotide and then this will be not possible to add the incoming nucleotide so guys what will happen so this will lead to termination of the dna polymerization so if you add a di deoxy nucleotide 
the DNA synthesis will be terminated. Right? Suppose this was adenine, then we I am trying to add the guanine, but the adenine has dideoxy adenine. So this is dideoxy A. So I am unable to add this G for making one strand of the DNA, right? Okay, so that is a purpose. That is a point to understand first of all that why we use dideoxynucleotides are used in Sanger's technique as it doesn't allow the further elongation of DNA. So that's our answer. It doesn't allow the further elongation of the DNA. Right, so let's talk uh, about the Sangers, uh, some basic points about the Sangers and how it is uh, done actually. Okay, just a sec. So, uh, you know, what is sequencing, you all know what is sequencing. Sequencing means to know the sequence of the DNA, right? Okay sequence of a gene. So, you know, just to uh, understand the basic uh, point of the Sangers, right? Suppose this is a, a DNA, right? Let me take it uh, smaller ones to understand the topic, right? Suppose these are the multiple uh, nucleotides that we have, right? Suppose this is A, C, A, C, C, G, T, T, a, C, whatever it is like this. Okay, so <clears throat> we can uh, make it uh, a little different. Let's say A, T, G, C, and again A, T, G, C, A, and T. Right, so guys, basically the Sangers, right, the name of the scientist in 1980, he identified a technique to know the sequence of the gene. Right. So that was like very useful during the human genome project. So what he used, you know, that is like, you know, sequence the DNA, right? We will sequence the DNA using, we'll sequence the DNA using the uh, dideoxynucleotide triphosphates, right? Then obviously we'll take a DNA polymerase, okay, right? And, uh, and a primer. So just like PCR, uh, in the PCR we take DNA polymerase, primer and nucleotides but not the dideoxynucleotides. We take the dideoxynucleotides here. So basically you know we will give them fluorescent colors, right? So I can also say the, these are like fluorescent dideoxynucleotides we will be adding. So we can give them different different colors, you know because they are dideoxy. Suppose this is A is a green color then uh, T is a red color, okay, then G is the blue color and C is the black color, right, or let's take it a different color, let's say take it a, take it a pink color here, green color, pink color here, right, so C, right, so guys these are uh, A, T, G and C, let's keep it black only, fine, so you know guys what we will be doing now we will be doing uh, so these are present in the different different test tubes right and now we will be mixing it okay so we will be simply mixing the dna which you have to sequence plus you will take deoxynucleotides normal one right plus you will take deoxy or uh, dideoxy nucleotide but which is more, obviously you will take the normal one in the more concentration. Dideoxy will be in the lesser concentration, right? Okay, so we will take the dideoxy in the lesser concentration. Okay, uh, please ignore this camera point. Okay, so a DNA, so dideoxynucleotide triphosphate and dideoxynucleoside. Uh, got the point, so which we are adding more? more of the let's say d atp etc instead of d d atp like that you're getting my point so i'll be adding more of the normal nucleotides so now you can see here that this was a sequence so if this was a sequence you know the using this dna polymerase in the reaction we will keep on making the new dna right we'll keep on making the new dna let's say the new dna is made uh, made like this suppose a 
then in front of a so this is 5 prime and this is 3 prime so this is a new 5 prime right a then this is t then this is g then this is c then this is a now suppose the t is added here which is dideoxynucleotide let's not add here okay so suppose t then g then c then a now t is added here so guys we get a length of dna like this are you getting a point this is the length of the new dna that i got understood okay with the dideoxynucleotide so this color we can identify right and we can identify that what was the first base suppose at the 5 prime of the target dna so by the color i can say okay uh, this was a t because the color is red i can say t now the second again so again take the same dna and let's start again so when when we start again suppose again the a t g c a t g c now it will stop here again so it will stop here again right so i can say okay so uh so this was a a sorry a a color of the a was green so guys this was like a so guys this is the length of the next dna fragment so guys we keep on getting the different different uh, dna fragment lengths and uh, suppose again a t g c a t g now it will stop at c the so c has a color which is black right okay so let's take it c so c now let's take the c as a this color multicolor so c so guys can you see the dna of the different lens we will be getting ultimately right of the different different lens different different lens will keep on getting will keep on getting keep on getting keep on getting like this hope hope you understood this point okay so we'll keep on getting the different different lens of the dna so these different different lens of the dna will have a different different termination point okay and based on this termination point we will uh, you know keep on identifying that this was the first because t is in front of it so this was the first nucleotide second a was in front of it so the second nucleotide third c was in front of it so third nucleotide must be g right hope you understood so this is called as the sanger's chain termination sequencing method what do you call this you also call this by the name that is called as the sanger's chain termination okay sanger's chain termination method okay or you can say di deoxy method of the dna sequencing so guys hope you understood this it is called as sanger's what was shotgun sequencing so now you know sanger's right so using one template we are making multiple copies with different different lens and different different color of the uh, signal right so we can analyze what is the color signal a uh, color of the signal and what was the actual nucleotide in front of it or complemented to it right so guys this is a sanger's chain termination method then i told you shotgun sequencing so if you break this dna into short pieces and then a, and then do the sanger's that is called as shotgun okay so that was second was shotgun sequencing now you know right this was a part of human genome project break the dna and sequence it huh? guys third and the latest that you must know is the next generation sequencing that is already part of some mcqs in uh, uh, previous exams of pgi right next generation sequencing this is also called as massive okay massively parallel sequencing right massively parallel sequencing so guys in this case what we do <coughs> we will be doing the sequencing of one template like this one suppose and this is my one template so i am doing the sequencing of this one tab template for multiple times hundreds thousand of times right so that is called as a next generation sequencing and it is very fast right you know guys what uh, how it is done suppose this is the target dna right 5 prime to 3 prime suppose this is a gene that you want to a gene fragment not the gene okay gene fragment that should be less than 600 
base pair okay so not bigger than this so we will be using small fragments like we used in human genome project so less than 600 base pair now on this uh, gene fragment we will add, add some uh, you know material that is called as adapters so guys that is the red color that is called as adapter suppose this is a micro slide a very small slide or the beads okay bead in the instrument right we have something that is called as a bead or a uh, small slide right micro slide so this bead right this is a bead on which this dna will bind using the adapter so this adapter has an affinity for binding this bead okay so suppose now this is our gene so this is my gene let's say small gene okay let's forget this uh, other bead but this is my gene and suppose the sequence of the gene is simple just to understand a c and g so guys again i'll be using a fluorescent nucleotide right and the signal of that nucleotide will be captured by the computer okay suppose when i am taking this to the instrument right my instrument will start adding the new nucleotides to it so a then binds with the t so i get a green color c bind with the g i get a red color then uh, g bind with the c i get a blue color so guys this is called as you know this is called as a next generation sequencing so as you can see we are getting a new dna and i know how the new dna is formed as per the sequence simple it is very fast right sanger was a laborious process right because in the sangers you know it was very difficult to analyze the stats in this case the analytics are very easy because it's everything is digital sangers the time at the time of sanger it was very difficult to analyze the color and to find the actual nucleotide but this this become this has become very very easy right so guys this is our new dna which is formed so i know the sequence of the actual dna hope you understood so we do it multiple times guys okay so i'll be doing it multiple times the same dna will be sequenced multiple times multiple times multiple times same dna right the same dna that is a sequence of a c and g will be sequenced massively that's why we call it massively parallel sequencing so what is the benefit of this se uh, sequencing guys this is definitely the faster results we will get and you know guys the accuracy or the precision right okay so it can find the minor differences right suppose i i did this uh, Uh, sequencing for one thousand times. So if seven hundred times I got a same sequence, so that was that will be counted as a uh, the actual sequence. But three hundred times we are getting some differences. Okay, then it can find the minor differences, right, between the uh, two alleles, right, two alleles. So guys, we have two alleles, one from father. we have the two copies of each chromosome so these two copies are called as alleles one from father one from mother so i have two alleles of my insulin gene maternal allele and paternal allele right okay so you know guys like in the population also we can find the differences okay between the two person right the differences the minor differences okay from the normal gene <clears throat> right so we can identify the very very low frequency mutations right okay the mutations which are very rare can be easily identified by next generation sequencing guys see remember to identify any mutation the best technique always is is the sequencing the whole genome sequence the whole genome and compare it with the normal data and you will be able to find even the slightest difference or the slightest deviation from the normal so when somebody ask you what is the best technique to identify any mutation it will be sequencing right it may not be sangers or uh, next generation in the option but sequencing is the answer and definitely nowadays right we are only doing one thing that is called as the next generation sequencing you know if the patient can afford 
okay that will be hardly let's say 20000 and the whole genome can be sequenced so hope you got the point guys okay <clears throat> so that is uh, few sequencing next generation sequencing was a separate topic how it is done i told you what is the other name i told you it is precise accurate and can find differences in the two alleles very easily right so these are the three points to remember <clears throat> so extra points that i told you about this topic you should know so guys right, sanger sequencing even if you don't know the word sangers you know the word dideoxy you have talked about some drugs also in your pharmacology which are dideoxy nucleotides okay <clears throat> uh okay before question 7 i am taking first of all question number uh 8 okay so technique to study the dna protein interaction so what is the technique to study the dna protein interaction that is called as dna footprinting is the answer right dna foot printing is the correct answer <clears throat> right so guys what is footprinting so uh protein right so suppose a protein that's called as transcription factor or suppose there is a protein that's called as rna polymerase it's an enzyme so it's an protein it's a protein so protein that's called as a transcription factor for example right or the rna polymerase you know they bind at the specific site like the promoters huh? for example promoters right so they bind at the specific site at the dna right so guys <clears throat> that site okay that site is you know with will is is occupied right suppose it's the dna and this is the site where a rna polymerase is supposed to bind okay so suppose this is the blue color rna polymerase right it is binding here like this right so rna polymerase is binding to the gene right let's say 3 prime to 5 prime to make rna which is 5 prime to 3 prime so guys this is a site which is now protected okay which is the site which is now protected so what is the use of dna footprinting the dna footprinting is the process is a technique to identify the binding site of the proteins to the dna right okay what is the length what is the sequence etc so i'm giving you a brief overview about it like this so suppose this is a gene this is rna polymerase which is a protein and this is a site which is let's say promoter and now this promoter is protected from any damage by enzyme that is called as dnas what is the name of enzyme dnas okay so that's why we call it actually the full name of this is dnas dna footprinting the actual full name of this is dnas dna is the name of enzyme dnas okay so basically the point is that this site cannot be degraded by the dna's enzyme okay cannot be degraded by the dna's enzyme right so it is protected now suppose uh, based on this figure based on this figure from leninger see <clears throat> so it is written like you know we have done the electrophoresis here as such so uh, separate fragments by page electrophoresis and visualize the radio labeled bands on the x-ray right okay so guys you have taken two samples find one which is unbound dna and one which is bound dna in the figure that i have shown you so one this is bound dna and i have taken one which is unbound dna now then i took the enzyme that's called as dnas right dnas will cut the dna at multiple sites so suppose it is cutting the dna like this and i will get multiple bands okay now it will also cut the dna like this but i will get bands but this band will be missing are you getting a point this band will be missing as you can see in the figure the bands there must be some more bands like this now so these bands are missing because 
this was the area of the dna which was occupied by a transcription factor or any protein or a rna polymerase okay so hope you understood so guys i know the size of this i will take a ladder you know i will take a ladder also to compare it ladder means ladder is something like a scale you know you must be knowing already ladder is something like a scale which will give you give us the idea that this is 2 kb fragment and let's say this is the uh, 20 kb fragment and in between we have the different sizes of fragments so i can identify these fragments and we can identify these from this gel we can check their sequence you know like whether it was a tata tata or uh, box or cwt box whatever it was that, that's how it was identified so guys simple first you should know what is dna fingerprinting your answer is dna footprinting sorry what is dna footprinting so this is a process by which we can analyze the binding site of a protein at gene that's it right hope this detail will help you okay in the next uh, exam question okay so hope you understood this topic right fingerprinting elisa northern blot is to identify the rna right elisa is to for various test you will read also in your microbiology okay now next question question number 7 so question number 7 is correct order for isolation of desired protein so guys this was the mcq right or the mcq was like what is the correct sequence of the dna recombinant dna ya recombinant protein synthesis so in our lectures in our class we always talk about the uh, topic that is the sequence or the how the recombinant proteins like human insulin is synthesized right but this question if this was a question right as per the maximum students right this was the question actually not on the synthesis but how to how to isolate the proteins so that was something unusual they asked right because that's a whole lot of techniques involved here fine but still uh, you know we can uh, understand this process easily right okay isolation <clears throat> okay just uh, one thing first of all <clears throat> guys recombinant protein synthesis and isolation so guys it has total number of uh, uh number of steps are there right so we have number of steps which are utilized here so we have already talked about them uh, at least some some steps which are uh, part of synthesis of humulin in this topic in that topic we have you know talked about it <coughs> okay so now i'm giving you the sequence right and some brief important overview okay so first step starting from the first step so isolate or you can say extract the desired dna suppose i am making uh, a protein x let's say we are making some protein known as uh, human insulin for example huh? so how we can proceed so there are lots of ways to proceed on that so first of all so now you understand it properly right as per sequence and as per some important points and then the mcq is already asked so first we have to isolate or extract the desired dna now to extract the desired dna what you have to do you have to lyse the cell right so i am not talking about the mcq right now mcq Uh, the uh, mcq of fine ct i'm uh, I'll, i'll i'll be covering after this point right so isolate or extract the desired dna fine so to extract the dna guys you need certain enzymes huh? so suppose you can take the enzymes like let's say uh, lysozyme for example you can take the enzyme so if there was a rna you have to degrade the rna because you don't want rna so degrade the rna with rnas you have lots of proteins in the cell so you have to degrade the proteins also so that we will use enzyme that's called as protease okay so protease degrades all the proteins of the cell rnas degrade all the rnas in the cell lysozyme will break the membranes and release all the contents 
okay <clears throat> so i wanted dna only so you know guys first of all we will remove everything else and now let's say only dna is remaining okay so then we will be adding the ethanol okay ethanol which is at very low temperature icing temperature right and this will basically precipitate the dna right now because this topic uh, has been asked multiple times i am taking some extra details which you may have not already in your notes right so we can add them to your notes rest you will find you know maximum you will find some points extra i'm adding here so this is how the isolation is done so this is the first step in the recombinant dna technology right and then uh, whatever the dna we got we got the whole nuclear genome right so now cut with restriction endonuclease right guys as you all know restriction endonuclease cut at palindromic sequence like this g double a double tc so which is also g double g double a double tc so g double a double tc like that okay so this is your two strands of the dna having this sequence so 3 to 5 upper and 3 to 5 lower are same so the enzymes which are known as the restriction endonucleases are cutting at this point right guys so that's our second step then we have the third step okay third step so in the third step we will be suppose i want to take only the gene for a particular protein like insulin so isolate the desired gene okay <clears throat> isolate the desired gene <clears throat> first of all we'll do that so guys we can isolate the desired gene right uh, by the various mechanisms okay okay like we can do the uh, you know uh, the electrophoresis for example right we can do the page for example so i i can isolate the desired gene using the technique so i can use a technique that is called as electrophoresis and i can separate the dna based on charge because it is negatively charged it will move towards plus or anode okay so whatever the size i know already the size of the desired gene so i will you know i will take that size of the gene and amplify it so for this amplification okay amplification because i want not just one copy huh? i want millions of copies during the experiment because you know the dna may be lost during the process okay so amplification now amplification i can do using pcr fine using the pcr or guys we can also do the process that is called as cloning okay we can also do the process that's called as a cloning so guys during cloning what we do during cloning we will simply uh you know we will take a vector first of all so vector right so what is a vector vector means dna carrier right so vector is a separate question dna carrier so most common dna carrier that we used in the experiments of genetics that is mcq is plasmid guys plasmid is a very small extra chromosomal material can carry 6 to 10 kilo ba base of the dna right so this can carry 6 to 10 kilo base of the foreign dna foreign means like human dna in this case or the desired gene like insulin gene so only this much of the foreign dna it can take plasmid and why plasmid is so good because plasmid has uh, we can easily identify the plasmid because it is like you know one of the plasmid like pbr and it is in short it is written like this pbr it it, it is having uh, tetracycline and ampicillin resistance genes right so you can identify this you know uh, host which has this plasmid because the host which has this plasmid will be tetracycline resistant you know on the media on the culture media so dna carrier right can be plasmid guys the plasmid apart from plasmid we can have phage right so bacteriophage so it's a virus which infects a bacteria it can carry 10 to 20 kilo bases so this is also important questions guys how much they can carry phage then after the phage we have 
the next is cosmid cosmid is a mixture of phage and plasmid right this can carry around 35 to 50 kilo bases of the foreign dna then guys we have bacterial artificial chromosome so it's a chromosome which resembles a chromosome bacteria but it is artificial so bacterial artificial chromosome so guys this can carry 150 to 350 kilo bases of dna and guys this process this bac was used in again the human genome project so human genome project actually also because that time pcr was not you know available pcr was discovered by carry mullis very late right but uh, you know to amplify the desired dna you had only one option and that was during the human genome project and that was cloning process that i'm discussing here so for the cloning i need vector right and these are the examples of vectors yeast artificial chromosome why for yeast so this can carry up to you know 100 to 1000 kilo bases of dna so one of the most efficient dna carrier but uh, you know we rarely we don't use it much except in the human genome projects we use such examples so guys we use a vector right what is the next point is not the next step but only the this point vector dna plus the human dna cut with the same restriction enzyme okay and the complementary ends and the complementary or the sticky ends you know just like a jigsaw puzzle right that the two ends which are complementary will join to each other because they are cut by the same restriction endonuclease hope you know how the restriction endonuclease works you know it cuts and makes a sticky ends which are you know sticky ends which are uh, like this having unpaired nucleotides right so that is a sticky end unpaired nucleotides are there like a c g so the other other end which contains such unpaired nucleotides opposite of it you know, like the t for example or the g or c so they will bind to each other because they're cut by the same enzyme they have the similar type of uh, sticky ends right okay so that opposite sticky ends we will take and we will join them so sticky ends are joined by okay they are joined by the dna ligase so guys what enzyme we use in the various enzymes we use i have already given this question in uh, tnd exams right what are the various sequence of enzymes we use in the process of recombinant dna technology so we used what restriction endonuclease then we use dna ligase also right okay fine <clears throat> so guys this is called as a recombinant dna fine this is called as recombinant dna so this was our uh, you know step number five sorry fourth step was amplification done this was ligation fifth step fifth step is just a second fifth step is uh, ligation right to the vector dna so dna that we have taken like insulin gene and ligation to the vector dna guys for example for while making insulin or human insulin in the bacterial cell host cell we normally don't use the dna we use mrna that we have uh, you know that we know already that mrna has no introns so instead of taking the desired DNA, we can use mRNA and make the complementary DNA. Nowadays, that is a better process which is used. Okay, better process that is used. <clears throat> okay, so guys, this is the formation of the recombinant DNA formation. Okay, this is recombinant DNA is formed. So what is the what is the meaning of a recombinant DNA? Or you can also call this chimeric DNA. So fusion of the two different DNA, chimera, chimeric, right? Chimeric DNA. So this is, let's say, the plasmid DNA, and this is the human DNA. Guys, then rest, we can add something to it. We can add, uh, you know, just to write. So to increase, okay? 
to increase yeah we can say to synthesize the desired protein in the host so e coli will make the insulin for us so to synthesize the desired protein in the host cell what we have to do right we will simply add some promoters add the promoters or the add the prokaryotic promoters host is bacteria so host bacterial cell we add the prokaryotic promoters like uh, ribno box for example okay ribno box so guys that is ligation uh, to the vector fine <clears throat> fine so now this uh, ligation after the ligation to the vector six step fine so suppose there are promoters also p4 promoters this is a plasmid dna this is the uh, desired dna or the gene which has been inserted so guys the sixth step is transfer the expression vector so guys what we made above is called as expression vector see the construct that we have made i have taken the vectors dna i have taken the insulin gene and i have taken the promoters for the binding of rna polymerase of the e coli right so i have taken three things so this three things will express in the host bacteria see plasmid doesn't express in the host bacteria unless until it is modified so we have modified it so now it becomes a expression vector so now you know the term expression vector so transfer the expression vector to the host cell right to the host cell so guys we can uh, transfer this uh, to the host cell you know we can use certain techn techniques like one is called as transformation okay so this is via let's say transformation so guys what is transformation transformation is when the bacteria itself takes the plasmid okay so put the bacteria plus the expression vector in calcium chloride solution so guys because of this you know what will happen the calcium channels will open in the bacteria this will also take the plasmid so this is called as transformation guys we can take transfection so what is the term transfection transfection means you are deliberately transferring see transformation means bacteria take itself transfection you are deliberately transferring right so example via liposomes for example using the liposomes you can transfer you can use something that is called as gene gun already mcq right you can use the term a uh, gene gun what is gene gun you can take the dna just coat some little amount of gold to it expensive eh? or some other metal so gold to it and you know just bombard it with the with with a certain instrument known as a kind of a gun so that's called as a gene gun so because it's heavy the gold will enter into the uh, membrane right third <clears throat> you can also do the process that's called as electroporation right electroporation so these are the techniques to transfer the recombinant dna to the host cell electroporation so using some pulsed electricity you can create holes in the pores in the membrane right guys okay <clears throat> so gene gun electroporation so these are the techniques so the, we are at the sixth step so guys the protein is expressed hmm? so finally desired whatever the desired protein you are making desired protein is expressed right don't forget what i told you that nowadays we can use instead of gene we can use mrna because mrna has no introns so it is only coding portion so this will be easier one to use as a cdna and convert this into the cdna or complementary dna so desired protein is expressed now our question comes right so we have covered both the question because there was a confusion whether the question was on the steps of recombinant dna protein synthesis or the question was on isolation of protein so seventh is 
दिस आर एम सी क्यू आइसोलेट द डिजायर्ड प्रोटीन राइट सो गाइज आइसोलेट द डिजायर्ड प्रोटीन यू नो दिस विल टेक सर्टन स्टेप्स अगेन राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेल लाइसिस सीक्वेंस नाउ यू आर लुकिंग एट द सीक्वेंस ओके सो आफ्टर द सेल लाइसिस यू विल हैव द प्रोटीन so then you will do in our mcq there was a mention of sds page so you will do the sds page which is a kind of electrophoresis so what is sds page is based on so electrophoresis based on charge okay based on mass by uh, charge by mass charge by mass ratio so guys in sds page this is a compound sds sodium do disyl sulfate not important so this sds binds to the proteins right suppose this was a protein first of all it will denature it and after denaturing this sds will bind it is negatively charged so it will provide equal negative charge to all proteins based on this charge by mass ratio will be same to all so based on this the proteins will be separated right in the electrophoresis okay so because they are negatively charged they will be moving towards plus side okay so this is how they are separated clear and now guys after the separation what you can do you can do the elution elution right elution simply means to extract the actual protein okay to extract the actual protein so hope you understood the process guys instead of sds page we can do lots of lots of other techniques huh? so instead of sds page you can do ion exchange chromatography that is based on charge you can do gel filtration chromatography that is based on size okay like this you can do affinity okay affinity chromatography right affinity chromatography guys what is affinity chromatography so cell lysis we have the protein and protein undergoes sds page so guys if the protein contains one example i am giving you you know uh, this affinity chromatography right this is affinity based uh, so based on histidine tags right guys anyhow if the protein which is made you know so this is a protein if it contains number of histidine residues right histidine 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 like this okay so guys this histidine has a very high affinity so suppose this is my column right which is a, a big broad column and on this column there is nickel so guys this nickel will bind with very high affinity to these histidine 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 and protein again nickel so histidine 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 and protein so the nickel column will actually bind all the proteins containing histidine so i'm giving you one example that instead of sds page there can be any other option sds page is not used it is very difficult to to remove the protein from the gel so we don't use sds page nowadays we use currently we use histidine tags this is your protein you have already modified it by some other mechanism that we can't discuss here so histidines are added to the proteins histidine will go through the column of the nickel nickel binds to histidine so this will be tight binding right and you know finally when you get this his uh, protein out separated that is called as elution so guys that's it so now you are ready with both the mcqs any any question if you are being asked whether it's a recombinant dna technology right some more techniques in that i talked about vectors also everything i talked about right so why we add promoters i told you hana huh? that is already part of our lecture notes also promoters we add so that the expression vector will be identified by the rna polymerase of e coli why we use e coli in the recombinant dna protein synthesis at the commercial level because the growth of e coli is very fast right okay so we get better results why why can't we use eukaryotic cells because the growth is very slow they need more uh, care huh? so guys that's it so this was all the detailed information about 
Human Genome Project, I told you about recombinant DNA technology, protein purification by this technique, DNA sequencing, I told you, now all the recent updates, okay. Then there is the last question, <coughs> this is our last question, detection of the mutation with low allele frequency can be done by, so guys see this depends, now what was the option I don't know, student gave me only these two options and even allele specific was not mentioned in many options right okay so basically i can use all of them first of all i don't know what were the options the question is low allele frequency means i told you know, rare mutations low allele frequency means a very rare mutation in the population right okay that is called as a low allele frequency now for example let's say in india cystic fibrosis is not common it's a rare mutation so low allele frequency so to identify that you need a very good technique so best will be this my answer will first of all go with this best i told you now for any mutation sequencing is best i don't know if sangers was there in the option because so few students said yes sir sanger was there in the option so sangers can be answered but but this is not the best this is very slow and not used nowadays okay so this is the best now allele specific pcr Anna, suppose the gene which is defective this is a gene 5 prime to 3 prime single strand i am taking so you know when i want to make the primer guys i will make the primer at the defective site so this is a defective allele so i will make my primer for this defective allele are you getting my point because we add primer to the PCR. Na? So this is the allele which is specific to the target mutation. And only if this mutation is there, there will be amplification. So that's it. So this can also be the answer. Right? Let's take the probabilities. Then a lot of students were talking about sir, what is this? Obviously, guys, there are there are almost 15 to 20 types of PCR variations are there. And we can't remember everything, right? Okay, so don't get carried away by these words and don't, don't waste your time on that. What is digital droplet PCR? Why I don't know that? We should know basics of PCR, not digital droplet PCR. But still I'm telling you, see what is digital droplet PCR? It is the latest technology, right? Okay, again, it was again like launched in 2020 only. Uh, I mean like came into existence in 2020. So it is a very latest technology and this is very very good technology again to find the rare mutation so this can be answered in the mcq if these two were not in the option sangers we can ignore if this was not in the option so if this was not in the option i will go with digital droplet pcr is the best answer you know what is digital droplet pcr guys this is a pcr in which the the pcr mixture right so the PC, pcr mixture that we have okay suppose we have the pcr mixture in this tube so this tube uh, will the sample will be taken and converted into multiple droplets like this okay like multiple droplets and guys then each droplet containing the dna desired dna fragments will be amplified okay so it is like just like next generation sequencing type of thing okay because each droplet suppose we have let's say 1000 droplets for example right? so each droplet will give us the result and as we can compare the results with each droplets so massively parallel sequencing just like that i am able to check the same dna multiple times so i am getting results of the pcr not one time but hundreds of times and then we can say that out of 100 let's say 97 are giving this results and 3 are giving other results so that will increase our accuracy precision etc okay so that is based on that digital droplet pcr so just compare it with the massive uh, next generation sequencing it's kind of that okay okay so guys if next generation was not in the option I will go with digital droplet PCR because it is again same as next generation sequencing. I am into similar to that in terms of getting the results multiplied, getting the results in thousand of times, right? I am getting the same result. So 
you know what you can do you can compare the two alleles one the normal allele and one the disease causing allele and you can see the differences between the two alleles right okay but still if this was a question and next generation was in the option this will be the my answer if this is not in the option this is my answer digital droplet pcr okay so guys all the best thank you so much okay <clears throat> listen uh, everything carefully uh, don't miss anything because uh, we have covered everything in details we'll keep on adding more points right regarding the latest advances in the uh, you know this uh, genetics part for the next uh, in in our group plus for the next sessions right okay so guys thank you so much all the best for your results and all the best for the neat pg exam uh, neat pg exam will be same right i mean though there there are very less chances don't get carried away by these questions which are hardly two or three something different question so don't get carried away by these questions that there will be more genetics more molecular in the exams no right it is not always the fact uh, this happens only in the central exams like pgi and aims etc okay <clears throat> all the best guys thank you so much